Hi there, this is Mar Haddad here again. So we have reached the, in the previous lecture to this level. Now, we have two options, whether we use the guide me step by step to my desired configuration or use the default configuration only. Which one to choose? Well, it's up to you. But I prefer to use this option because I can do my desired configuration. So I click on it and then I will say next. Now, do you want to make basic options or want to go to the advanced options? Well, as we are already on a course which is entry level for Juniper, so let's choose the basic option. And then I make next. Now, what do you want to give a name for the device? Let's name it, for example, SRX. The username, it is root. The password, well, we can use the same password, Juniper123, Juniper123. All right. And now if you want to add more accounts, so you can just make plus. So again, username, for example, I give my name here and then password Juniper123, Juniper also 123. And here you can provide the role. So you have operator, read only, super user, disable. So this is the highest, the super user operator is if you have someone working in your company, which is a knock guy or an engineer guy that you don't want to give him the full access, then you can provide him uh, operator read only is just he can read, he cannot do any changes. But I will go for super user, done. Now we go to next. Very good, now it's asking for you the time server. So uh, uh, the time server that we're gonna use in Europe, uh, I'm not sure, I think it's EU, but let's just go to ntp.pool.org. That's it. And now the uh, time zone, so the time that we want to put for the shelter, it is CET, Central Europe time. Of course, uh, for you, if you are if you are not in Europe, you can choose the time that, for your, that you have on your country. And then, then I'll say next. So this is the first thing, it's done, and then I'll say next. Now, it, gave, it says to you that, okay, now we have to configure the Ethernet zone, the DMZ zone, and the internal zone. What does it mean here? Let me go back to the picture to show you what it means. So the Juniper router has different zones. We have the uh, Internet zone, we have the DMZ zone, and we have the internal zone. The Internet zone, that means the zone which connects you to the Internet. So in my case, this is the Internet zone. You see this part. Yeah, DMZ, if you have some web server, for example, that you want to put them on DMZ zone, then the old main server. But in our case, this is an entry level course, so we're not going to configure DMZ zone. So this is, uh, let's put it here, Internet zone. And over here, this is, all those are the internal zone. Internal means my internal network, internal zone. So everything which is inside my network. All right, so we have to configure that side and we have to configure that side. Let's go back. Now we say next. All right, it asks you, how is your internet or your router connected? So it's exactly, this is how it is. SRX connected to the internet zone. So to the internet, and it's connected also to the internal zone. We don't have this level, we have this one. So I would choose this one and then we say next. If you don't see the next button because of my picture, so there is, let me just show you that, that there is a next, you see there is a next one over here, that is the button. Okay. Now, where do you want to plan your internet, uh, to configure your internet uh, access credential PPOE? So if you have PPPOE from your ISP, then most of the time you have it on your DSL or cable modem. All right, so that's most of the time that the ISP provides you that. In case not, you can you want to have it on your SRX to choose it. In my case, I don't have PPPOE, so it's not applicable. All right, now I'll say next. Now here is the important part. Which zone is going to be the internet zone? Remember, we said, if we go back to the picture, that the internet zone, we put it on this port, right? The You see the black one. So here I have to say on Port zero is the internet and it's going to receive an IP address automatically from the ISP. The ISP is going to provide this port, an IP address, the subnet mask, the gateway, the DNS. All right, so I click on port zero and then that is the internet. 
and I'll say next. Now, do you use DMC to expose business servers to the internet? You see, in case you're using a web server or mail server, you can put them on DMZ. No, I don't have DMZ now, because then we can configure the firewall. Then I will say here, no. Now, we have to speak about the internal zone. All right, how is it connected? Do you have one network, or you have two networks, or three networks? So in my case, I only have one network. And then I will say here, next. Very good. So this is the internal zone. You can name it. I will leave it internal. So the IP address that is going to be provided from the router to your LAN devices, I will leave it 192.168.1.1, which is the router, and then .2, .3, .4, .5, until 254 is going to be provided to my LAN devices. So this is the CIDR, which is slash 24. That means 255.255.255.0. Now, where is the port that you want to use it for this zone? So in my case, I want to use it on port 1, but you can choose more than one port. Maybe you, we have to select all those ports all together to be the ports for the LAN. So that means if I put my computer on any of those ports of the router, then it can receive an IP from 192.168.1. something, and then it can go to the internet. And very important, remember to put here enable DHCP server, because then the router will provide this IP automatically to your devices, the LAN devices. All right, so we selected the, the ports, and then I will say here, next. Now, if you, as they said, you want to configure the HCP server to the internal zone. So what is the starting IP and the last IP? So I would say I want it to start from 2 to 254. That's very good. And I want the DNS. So this is DNS automatically. But no, I just want to say that the computer that are requesting the DHCP server from the router, it's going to receive an IP of the DNS 8.8.8.8, for example, and 1.1.1.1. It's very important to have DNS on our computer. Otherwise, we are not able to go to the websites because the DNS has a function to map the domain name to the IP address. And then I'll say done. So here we can have a review of what we have done. The internet zone, you see, it's on fast internet 0 over 0 over 0. We don't have DMZ. We have internal. The HTTP server is enabled. DNS, that is the range of IP. And it's enabled on all the rest of the interfaces. And then I'll say next. Now, security, policy, topic, and section included. So those are some additional things that we need to, um, or we can configure. So now, activate your purchase uh, purchase security license uh, service license. So I'm not going to do anything here. I will just say next. Now, it's very important here that uh, this is uh, what uh, allow us to have the internet. So they are creating here a firewall rule and, I sh and to say that to allow the traffic to go from the internal to the internet. So any traffic that is going from the internal, that means from my LAN devices to the internet, it is allowed. And the rest is deny all other traffic. You see, deny all other traffic. If you want to change or do something else, you can just click on add and create the rules that you want. So this is important to keep it next. Now they say, okay, what also do you want to allow so you, for the management, so to connect to the router? So I'm going to allow HTTP and HTTPS because to connect to it via JWeb and SSH and Telnet to connect to it the command line using those two protocols, which are protocols to allow me to connect remotely to the network device. So I'm going to leave everything as it is. Next. Now, would you like to allow remote worker to access internal and DMZ zone, so if you have someone working from home, for example, and you want to connect to your network, so uh, if you are, for example, having your router on a uh, on uh, your company, and you have a firewall, do you want to allow him to connect to VPN to you? In my case, this is, again, an entry course. I'm not going to do that, so I'm going to say no. And here we can see the review, what we have done. And now we say next. Now, the last thing to do is the NAT. Remember, we said we have to configure the DHCP, we have to configure the NAT. So we have to say next. This is important. Add source NAT to these internal zones. 
So source net means what? Means that any IP coming from my inside network is netted to go to the internet. So that's what is the source net. So I'm ch it's check here the internal and then I will say next. That's it. So source net on my internal next. And those are the whole things that I have configured on my router. Now we have to say next and we have to say apply settings. Now to apply the settings, this may take uh, two minutes, something like this. So we have to wait until this is finished and then we will check if we have internet. So I will uh, stop this video now here, this lecture. We are already 11 minutes, so we stop it here and then we come, we come back to the upcoming lecture to see if my PC is uh, able to go to the internet. So see you in the upcoming lecture.